one week, that's seven days, 168 hours, 10,080 minutes. In reality, this is such a small blip in time. But to me, it seemed like the perfect amount of time to challenge myself and my skill to a fishing contest. I charted out a course that would take me through three states, over 600 miles, and across countless bodies of water with one goal in mind. Catch a fish every day on a river I've never caught a salmon on before. I knew it wasn't gonna be easy, but I guess that's kind of the point. Welcome to the seven day challenge. So the plan day one, we headed north. We wanted to start this trip as far north as we possibly could and work our way south and end the seventh day somewhere in either Southern Oregon or California. First day, loaded up the truck, headed out early, got set up and met up with our first guide that we were gonna go with, Tyler. Um, and we'd fished with Tyler before, but not in this particular location. So that first day we were headed out looking for chum salmon, looking for silver salmon, and uh, a lot of the trout species that were in that river as well. Well, here we go, dude. It's really happening here. Right out in front? So we hit that first run, we kind of motored down, got to the first little area that we knew were gonna be some fish staged up in between some of the sections of these forks of these rivers. Um, and so we got into the first run and the goal that day was to kind of portray the plug fishing, you know, something that he loves to do, something he wanted to teach the addicts how to do a little bit and kind of spread some knowledge throughout the trip. He starts backing the plugs down and we make it about 20 yards and that left rod just starts bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And right rod, left rod, there he is. The one thing about plug fishing, look, I still don't have the rod in my hand. Never ever want to pick it up too fast. We'll go over that today as we go along. We're going to do a little tutorial. And it broke. <laughs> Here's our first fish of the trip. Nice little coho. Mm -hmm. A little wild fish. Oh, that was right. Due to break, man. All I did, all I did was touch it too. No, I know that rod's been due to break. <laughs> cool, man. Well, that's a good way to start. River number one, fish number one. I'm extremely excited. It kind of sets the tone for the whole thing. And to be quite honest with you, dude, I never fish plugs. So it's really neat to get one doing this, fishing these big K14s like this. Cause you know what, the exciting part of it for me too is there's no clue. We have no clue what we're gonna hook every time. You might have an idea cause of the spot, but we don't know what kind of fish we're gonna get. And that's yeah. like the exciting part of these plugs. Chum, coho, Everything. Look at that, give him a kiss little. Cool, see you later buddy. Nice little hand. Woo! Fish number one, dude. Good job. Hell yeah, I knew the plug would get those it. those plugs in, too. I was like, we gotta go down here. <laughs> oh, there's a bite. Got it. Got it. Big old squaw. Big old squaw. What a trophy. Fish number two of river number one. Not one that we'd like to see. We don't like those ones. So those are the pike minnow, northern pike minnow, and those eat a lot of the salmon and steelhead smolts that get put in the river. So we like to get those things taken care of so that one, they don't eat the rest of our eggs, and two, save a couple salmon and steelhead just now. So just doing my part for nature. At least I got to just wail on a hook set though. Let's work this stretch down. Takeout's like two corners down, so we'll just fish this up. Okay, we're at the ramp. We're gonna shuttle the rig really quick. We're gonna wait for him up top, and then we're gonna go run up to where hopefully these fish are sitting. All right, everybody. We just got to the next put in. Obviously, a little bit smaller. Looks way nicer, though. I think this is where we're gonna find them. What happened was last night it actually rained a bunch 
um, over the last couple of days, but we haven't had rain in weeks. So it's a kind of the best case scenario, but a lot of those fish that were in the lower system waiting for the rain seem to have shot up from obviously what we saw this morning. So we're gonna dump this boat in. We're gonna float down the little creek here. And I think what well, it opens up into a bigger river, right? Yeah, it opens yeah. up. But I think we're in the right position now. Let's go. I love the watercolor here, man. Just yeah, key color. Right here. Oh, there's a fish right there. There they go. Now we saw our first couple fish. Is that a couple more right there? Yeah. About 10 or so in that little pocket. We're looking for a pocket of 100 of them. For those of you out there that don't know what a chum salmon is, it's just a another species of salmon. It's kind of like a mix between a Chinook and a Coho. A lot of people don't fish for them or even really know what they are because the meat's not that good. Um, it's known as Kita salmon in the store. It's pretty good when they catch it in the ocean, but a lot of the river fisheries, they're not as good of a meat quality, so you don't really keep those fish, but they fight really well, and they're a lot of fun to catch. So they're more of the boisterous, easy to read, easier to catch salmon in the salmon world. So you hear our negativity and our frustration with having slow fishing today, but a lot of it is we aren't seeing the fish themselves, which you'd normally do if there's a lot of chum around. You see them splashing, as you're coming down to the next hole, you'll see them rolling and dipping and diving. So once we start seeing that, we'll have a little more confidence, but this has been a pretty tough day so far. But morale is still high. I haven't given up. Push on. There he is. Look at that. What do you know, everybody? It never failed. All I had to do was complain. What is that tiny? It looks like a trout. Looks like a trout, wouldn't it? Man? Oh my god, it's a gorgeous trout, dude. Oh my god. Get over here, you. That is so beautiful. Look at this, everybody. Wow. It's almost like a leopard rainbow, man. Oh, it's a cutthroat. See the red red on its throat there? It's a sea run cutty. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to get him back. Well, that's two species. I haven't caught a sea run cutthroat in a long time. That thing was mind-blowingly beautiful. I've never seen, all those sea run cutties that I've ever caught were really fresh, so they didn't have all those real defined spots and stuff like that. That was just incredibly gorgeous. Yeah, it's a steelhead now. I don't know, what, how about you, addicts? Early season, would you rather take 20 salmon in a day or one of, of the first steelhead you know of of the year? Comment below with what would excite you more. Cause I don't know, what about, I think really for me, it's steelhead all the way. Oh. I'd rather, ca I would leave here with such a big grin on my face me and too. call all my buddies if I caught one steelhead over like 40 salmon. Give me a hundred fish day of salmon, I'd take the one steelhead. Yeah. It feels like steelhead season though, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Well buddy, that's a wrap for day one, huh? I appreciate you getting us out there. Yeah, no problem. Total mission accomplished though, dude. Two species, one river, brand new river. First river of a 600 mile trip. It was a hard fought win, as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, I mean, we had to work. We worked for sure. Well, that was so weird, because it was total disappearance of fish. I know I've been hearing a lot of rumors about the area that we're in for, for months now, that it's been a really good season. And uh, river came up last night, everything was primo, but it just goes to show you, dude. Time on the water doesn't mean crap unless the fish are there. Oh yeah, they gotta be here to catch them. That's but, the thing. But, again, high five. Mission accomplished, dude. One species down. <laughs> Actually, two species. We got two species in one day. So, on to the next river. All right, everybody. I'm sure you're wondering what's up next. So. Being this is our first day of our trip, me, we're at, me and Sean are actually gonna be out on the road living like fish bums for the next few days. So we're gonna hop in the truck. We're gonna go eat some fast food, just like lowly fishermen do. I'm gonna throw the rods on the rack here. We're gonna go find a place for us to sleep because tomorrow's adventure is not very far from here. So we're actually just gonna crash in the truck tonight instead of setting up camp because it'll be easier and we're tired and we've been on the road fishing for a week now. So, so if you guys wanna see more, stick with us. I'm gonna throw the rods on the rack. We're gonna get in the truck and go find a place to crash. chicken and waffles. Look at this, everybody. Look at this. I gotta try it. I'm in. 
Dude, we, I think we need a peanut butter parfait too. Oh god. Can I get chicken and waffles basket, two of them? All right, would that be all? No, can I get a peanut butter parfait too? A peanut butter parfait? Yep. Okay. Have you ever seen something so amazing? Wow. All right, I already finished my peanut butter parfait before we even made it out of the drive-thru, so. That was pretty good, I think you could say. So the plan the next day, we weren't gonna move too much further, um, only about 10, 15 miles to the next river that we were gonna hit that next day with Keith. Um, so we went out and sought out camp that night, found a little shady spot on the side of the road and, and uh, tucked into the truck and went to bed for the night. Well, everybody, we survived last night. Didn't help our lumbars at all. My back is killing me, but it's foggy. It's gonna be a beautiful day. We're headed out to meet Keith Johnson right now, fellow addict, good friend of ours. And we're gonna go try to catch some more fish on a brand new river. So Keith has always kind of been a big name in the Northwest um, for chasing salmon and steelhead. And he's, you know, always been a real great supporter of the addicts uh, and just a real great, you know, name in the fishing community is a, just a high sought after guide. Um, so I met up with Keith and the second day and was really excited to fish this river in particular. It's one I've heard a lot about over the years and why not have the man in charge on that river, the guy who's lived there his entire life get to take you out. So we got a little bit later start in the morning because it was so cold that night. We wanted to let the water warm up a little bit and the water was really low and clear. So we, you know, we were facing some pretty tough conditions on day two on river two. And uh, again, had a lot of nerves going into that second day because hadn't got a lot of hot reports. But, you know, it was more about that adventure and having you guys along for the ride and sharing a little bit of that suspense on these trips when you're trying to accomplish this goal like that and, and you know, succeed in an idea of, of catching a fish on every river. So, well, again, we full send, went for it, hit the, hit the water with Keith and Zoe. And what unfolded next was absolutely magic. It was a beautiful day. All right, everybody, the fog is lifted, the sun's out, all our fingers are warm, and we're still looking for fish. We only fished one hole so far, fished a nice little bobber run with some eggs, but we're making our way down, just beating up the bank, and we're gonna see what we can find. There's a lot of water, and this river is notorious for having a lot of fish, so I'm sure we're gonna find something. What do you think we'll see the most of in here today? Uh, I think we'll see the most coho. We'll see some chum, maybe even a uh, summer steelhead, if we're lucky. Oh, what was that? That felt fishy. Hey, Keith, how long have you lived up here? How long have you been fishing in Washington? Um, I grew up here, actually. I've been fishing ever since I can remember. Yeah. Pretty lucky to grow up here, gain all the local knowledge that I have these days. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. A, I mean, I mean, you could drive two hours any direction here besides west and find pristine water. Yeah. Zoe. <laughs> Look great. Bait's gone. Well, <laughs> as I set the hook. That was really good. There's one right there. Is there? Oh yeah, big coho. Yep, there's four or five of them right in front of us. That yeah, first one I seen looked probably 12 pounds. Nice fat fish. Look at them all. Jesus. A lot more in here than I thought there'd be. You did? I did. How'd you miss One it? One head shake and it was gone. Oh, Zoe. All right, well, this is life on the road. We're still searching. We have a long float today, so we're going down through a lot of different water. We spotted our first coho here in this little slough but the conditions are just improving by the minute, I think. I think they'll keep improving through the week. We had a big rainstorm come in. It's kind of perfect timing for this trip to where we're going north into Washington and then south all the way to California. So we'll follow this storm south and get all these dropping rivers on the, on the dropping water level. So 
last couple days has definitely been a grind but i appreciate you guys sticking with us through this series because it's a lot of fun filming it and we hope you guys are enjoying the ride watching us go through and be fish bums for a week it takes a lot of energy i'm getting beat down it's only day two my back's killing me but i think we're gonna have some really cool stuff to come so stay tuned Zoe, when did you start fishing? Um, did your family do it? Yeah, my grandpa took me fishing when I was little a little bit. Just like on lakes for trout. Yeah. And then probably four years ago, he took me out for pink salmon. And I was like, oh my god, this is so much fun. <laughs> I was like, why haven't I been doing this, this more? This is what I've been sitting at home missing. No, I've always I've always been interesting that you don't see more, more women active in salmon. So I feel like trout's kind of dominated the female spectrum of, of fishing or like fly fishing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't mind fishing for trout, but I prefer <laughs> salmon. Once you've had a tug like this, yeah. you know, it's hard to turn back. There he was. There he is. Got him. Got him. Followed it out. Yeah. Rover. Not really nice. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. Order! <laughs> 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 yeah! Yes! Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah! We got dinner. Dude, yeah. heck yeah. Thank you. So it followed it all the way out. I got hit on the drop after I finally made it in there. I snagged in the tree on the first mm -hmm. cast. Hit it on the drop and it followed it all the way out to the center of the river. And just crushed it. On that new Mustad jig, check that out. <laughs> Woo! That's hard work paying off right there. Heck what yeah. A beautiful man. He's <laughs> 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 like, whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna bleed this girl out. We're gonna actually, me and Sean are, you guys are gonna stick along with us through this episode. We're gonna go set up camp after this, drive about an hour north set up camp tonight and we're gonna cook this girl over the campfire. She's gonna be good and tasty. And maybe we can talk Sean into eating some of the eggs. <laughs> cool, man. Oh, that feels so good. Such a good feeling to get that skunk off this morning. Let's go back over there and see if we can do that again. Oh, what a relief. That's probably gonna be the biggest anxiety ridden part of this whole series traveling like this is just what if we don't get a fish one day what's gonna happen you guys are gonna stick with us right i sure hope so because sean stuck with me seven days for seven days nice. oh just kidding oh looks so good <laughs> Oh, it is a fish! It is a fish! Oh my god! <laughs> it just did such a lazy... What hell. is it? It looks like an old chum. <laughs> totally an old chum, but it's oh, alright. He doesn't look moldy. <laughs> He's not moldy, it's a nice chum. <laughs> alright! Finally! We've been working two days for a chum, everybody. Keith put me on him. <laughs> Is it? It is an old snook, yeah! That's why he's fighting like that. Cool! Look at that, how buried that hook is in there. One more species on a new river. Oh, those are good hooks. Yeah, they, they definitely... I don't know if it's the curl on them or what, but they stick in there. <laughs> Thank you, sweet girl. Go do your job. Fought like an old log, she did. Yeah, she did. <laughs> All right, dude. Got my spinner fish right after I almost lost my spinner. Cool. They had it, had it no other way. Okay, well the day was a success, you guys. It's kind of winding to an end. We can see the takeout, it's in sight. The fat lady is almost sung. But what a great experience today was, Keith. I appreciate you floating us down the river. No problem. Week. It was a You're pleasure, an guys. Awesome company. I wish you would outfish me, but heck. <laughs> <Next time. laughs> yep, nice full of strikes and gutters, you know. 
But next, we're gonna hit the bank here. We're gonna help Keith load up the boat, get our stuff together, and then me and Sean are gonna try to go find our home for the night somewhere in the deep, dark woods. Thank you so yeah. much. Great to fish with you. Let's get out there and do it again soon. All right. So it was great. That's me. Yeah. yeah. Good fishing with you. Okay. All right, everybody. What's next? I'm starving. It's about one o'clock, 1.30. It's been set. The sun's been setting really early around here lately. So we're gonna do kind of beat cheeks. We're gonna get unwaitered here. Grab some snacks from town. But if you guys ever want to get out with Kfish, be sure to look him up. Kfish Johnson on Instagram is where most of his advertising is. He's an incredible guide up here in Northern Washington for Trophy Steelhead and for Coho. Today was a little bit slow, but we worked hard and we accomplished our goal again. Day number two, fish number two on the second river of our journey. Again, we're gonna travel north, find us some camp, find us some food, and have a good time. Hopefully you guys stick along with us. Oh, dude, I think this is home. I do, I do, I think this is home. River's right through the trees there. We got a nice picturesque little backdrop here. We even got rounds of wood for splitting. Yep, this is it. It's gonna be a beautiful setting to spend the evening with my buddy Sean. All right, everybody, well, here's camp. It sure is homey, isn't it? I love it. Look at the setting here. We're right down by the creek. Set our little tent up here. We got our kitchen set up on the tailgate here. And now we're gonna go fillet our dinner. Let's take it. We got the fillet away fish mat, our Gerber knife, and a, a little bag here. Let's walk on down to the river. Actually, we should take a pot so we can get some water, too. And we should probably take a fishing rod with us. That would, uh, that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So we pulled in, found our campsite for the night. And right as we went to go cook dinner, we wanted to eat the fish that we caught that day with Keith. Went down to the river to fillet it up on the fillet away fish mat. And we got down there. And as soon as I hit the water, we went over and fished for a second in this little creek that was behind camp. And I went in and I made my first cast, I remember. And looking down into the water, I couldn't, I, I was like, man, I wonder, I, we should be able to see the fish here. And so I made one cast and it flutters through and I watch the school of fish on the bottom of the river just part. And I realized at that time I couldn't even see the bottom of the water of the river because it was so many fish in front of me that were all big Chinook. So needless to say, I dropped the fillet knife and the fish on the bank and we went to fishing until the last light uh, and ended up cooking, cooking some salmon in the dark, of course. So we're just gonna pan sear our fish tonight. So I'm actually gonna take one of, ooh, we don't wanna forget about our eggs tonight. We're gonna cure those up for tomorrow morning. That'll be cool. Grab our filet here. Me personally, I kind of like eating the front shoulder of the fish the most. So that's the piece we're gonna eat tonight. Okay, everybody, so we're going really simple tonight. What we got here is just a nice hot cast iron skillet. Drop a big old dollop of butter in there. Maybe a little more than that, butter never hurt no one. Before I even put that in the pan, I'm actually gonna season this down a little bit. This is a little homemade garlic, onion powder, some, some oregano, some different stuff like that. A little homemade seasoning salt. Just gonna go light, light, light covering on over that. One as well. A little bit of basil in there too. Like that. And we'll drop our fish in. Yeah, baby. Okay, we got our mac and cheese going. A little bit of tailgate love, everybody. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed day two as much as I did. Again, worked really hard for it today. But that's kind of why you go on these trips. It's more just to prove to yourself that you can go to a different river and catch another fish. Luckily we had a good friend and, and a helper today in Keith Johnson. Big shout out to him for getting us out on the river, getting us one more fish on our second day of this long journey across the West Coast. So as I was being Chef Boyardee 
on the back of the deck. Little and Sean were given the task of starting a fire. And uh, needless to say, Sean didn't get her done building us a fire that night. So we fired up the little buddy heater. Thank you, Mr. Marlin, for giving us that. Uh, crawled in the tent and had to get up early the next day to go meet Ryan. All right, everybody, welcome to day three of the seven day Seven River Series. Woke up this morning, rolled out of the tent to have everything covered nice. So I put my gloves on and started packing up camp and rolled Sean out of bed. We got a balmy 32 degrees this morning. We're on our way to meet our good friend. If you've seen any of our Addicted Lives before, he's one of the uh, one of the tribal guides up here in Washington that is, is honestly, in my opinion, one of my favorite people to fish with. So we're going to meet him right now and get some coffee, but we're gonna go out today, day three, and get a fish for the third time on a different river. Good morning. Yeah, we made What's it. What's up, Sean? Hey. Hey, everybody. We're back. Found the man out here on the side of the road. Good Guys, figure. Let's go do some running around, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm excited. Me I was too. gonna put my gear on, but uh, we're gonna do a little bit of traveling, so. Perfect. It's freaking cold this morning. It's a little bit cold. <laughs> uh. So, as I'm so excited for this trip, we meet up. I get my coffee. I'm getting everything from the store. I'm ready to go and hop in the rig. We take about a 45 minute drive down to the first fishing hole that we're gonna go to to a place where he says he doesn't ever take anybody. Um, it was like, kind of like a good friend spot, you know, and it's, it's a spot that a lot of guys out there don't take anybody. All right, so I'm a complete, absolute idiot. I forgot my tackle bag in the back of my truck where we met this morning for coffee. So we, uh, we're improvising. He's got a ton of wicked lures, a lot of spinners. I don't have any of my bait. I don't have anything like that, but I got my Michael Jackson spinner, which, we know that does damage anywhere in the world. We had one twitching jig in the bag, just a black chartreuse head, so we're gonna really try hard not to lose it. And then this is an interesting thing I fashioned here. Where we were at, there could possibly be a steelhead somewhere, so I just got my half ounce float from yesterday on the 10.6 rod. I ran my split shot that I was using for my weight um, on my eggs down to the top here. I tied a big old like three-aught siwash hook and I put a pink worm on it. And I got the same bead dropper that Kfish put on there yesterday. So that's gonna be my backup. Hopefully, maybe it'll work. I can't believe I forgot my stuff. I'm sure a lot of you out there can probably relate, but this is obviously a special day. We're up here with Ryan and I left my bag in the truck. But that's okay, we're gonna go back and get it before we go to some other holes. So the first hole, let's see what we can do here. Let's go play. That was a good idea. Walked up here, got to the top with a twitching jig, casted it out, let it sink. It is really super deep out there. Ryan wasn't lying, it was probably like 10, 15 feet. Let it hit the bottom, jigged it out four times. Look at how chrome this thing is. What a beauty, man. Holy smokes. On the X twitcher, sea liced up. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow, platinum chrome. Well, that's it, everybody. Just like that, in the morning fog, got fish number three, the river number three. I'm sure today is gonna have a lot more in store. We're gonna let this beautiful little girl go. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes. High five, everybody. We did it. We did it. Thanks to our good friend, Ryan. He brought us to probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Sun's coming up through the alders across from us here. Now all we're missing is a nice herd of elk go walking by. So this morning's already been one of the best days of the trip. And I'm sure today's gonna have a lot more in store. Let's try this again. We did it, man. We did it. Fish number three. In the most <laughs> beautiful setting a guy could ever imagine. Awesome. Just a, just an electric chrome little chunklet. Perfect. So pretty. You just let him go? Yeah. Good job. You want fish? You want me to keep, keep fish for us? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll eat them right up. Oh my God. I'm such an idiot. That was going to be lunch. I let lunch go, everybody. Oh well. I think we'll catch another one.
I'm eating goldfish because I let go of the real fish. But, you know, that's how it goes though. You're supposed to let the first one of the year go, which is the first one of the year for me on this river. That's good luck because he goes back and tells all his friends it's safe to come up the river. It's safe to come up the river. You see that guy, he's friendly. Unless you're big and a, and a male, <laughs> then he'll eat you. Okay, well, it's snack time. We're gonna open the donuts, eat some milk pepperoni. Go ahead, unwrap it. And uh, head to the next spot. Maybe we'll swing by and grab my tackle. But this spot turned out really nice. This is a beautiful place to spend the morning, my friend. Or any time of day, I guess. You go little. All right, well, let's hop in and do it, eh? Let's do it. All right, everybody. Got, got it. We got the necessary tools now. Got more than one twitching jig, so. This looks like some good twitching water, too. I'm gonna lighten up my load a little bit here. I got way too much crap in here. Can't leave those, can't leave that. Maybe I'm not lightening the load. Starting it off with a hoochie here. Since we got some really still water, I want something with a little more sporadic action. Twitching jig was working earlier, but this water out here is super stagnant, so I'm gonna go with the hoochie. See what happens. There's gotta be one in there. I really hope we catch a Chinook too. This looks like a very nooky spot. Slow water. A lot of room for him to hang out. Right in, standing in the creek mouth of a some sort of little tributary creek here. I'm sure there's some spawners up there. I'm just trying to get in there to get their job done. There he was, darn it. Wonder if I'm bumping over him, it's kind of what it felt like. Doesn't really feel like rock, but it felt like fish. There he is, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Figured it would happen. Oh, nice. Oh, finally, man. I had to work him out of there. I think there must either be a pile of them. We're gonna eat him. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that was awesome, man. Yeah. There must be a little pile of them in there. Hey, get out of there. That's a perfect eating fish there, man. That's perfect. Sweet. Perfect. That's a dead fish. Yeah, buddy, good spot. <laughs> Woo. Good job. Almost left. That was the best part of that. So we've caught a fish in every hole we fished so far today on river number three of our seven day series. Thank you so much, Ryan, for bringing us here. Good job, Ryan. Well, I'm gonna make another cast in there. Yep. Kinda have to now, right? Yep. Atta boy, right here. Right in my feet. Oh man! <laughs> right on that leg, that was hard. Look at that. That's as far as as the as the plug was away from the run. Yep. Oh, hey. Oh, look out! Look out! Being good tonight. <laughs> That was cool. Oh, there he was again. Oh my God, he hit it so hard too. Dang it, man. These guys are toying with us. We were almost gonna leave. Now these things are gonna have us here for another hour of our life. But I don't care. I'll sit and stare at this setting for an hour of my life. Can't complain there. Hey everybody, well we killed two fish. Today is that much more of a success. Now we're gonna hop back in the truck hit the roads and try to find a couple more spots that produce a fish. So far we're two for two, so I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> and we're eating dinner. So we're not gonna go cold and hungry tonight. So cool, man, well good job. Back to back. Let's go do it again.
Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, stay on. Please stay on. Oh my god. I couldn't get my veil closed. Son of a gun. That was so cool. Did you get all that? What a way to start this little creek off. What do you think of that, everybody? That was awesome. I, first, I honestly did not mean to cast it in the tree there, but it happened and I'm like, heck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride this one out. Oh, stay on, please stay on. Oh my God. <laughs> I couldn't get my bail closed. What do you know? It took like two seconds. I don't think I could do that again. I tried. to make this one over the fire we might have a little extra time today to actually get some dry firewood before dark <laughs> all right all right man well day three three fish another river and another beautiful day i can't thank you enough perfect timing yeah, yeah. thank thanks. you so much for having us out here today thanks for coming out we got a long night ahead of us i think we're gonna go cook some fish over the campfire and Enjoy the stars tonight. You said there's a meteor shower tonight, right? It's supposed to be a meteor shower tonight. I might have to try to stay up past seven this time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, thank you yeah. again. Thanks again for having us and taking us to some special places. That was a really, really awesome morning and afternoon even. So, and we got still more to come today. We're gonna go try to find some more fish. So we're not. We're about 20 minutes from another river. See if we can knock one more river off for the day and uh, go have a little bit more fun. That's awesome. All right, man, we'll, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Go get a boat. <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll see you later, man. Bye, everyone. God, look how beautiful this is. Incredible place. Stay back a little ways from the water so we don't scare them. Oh, and chased it all the way to the bank. Oh, that was cool. I'm gonna get that fish. There's about a 30 pounder sitting right there. Oh my God, there he was. How did I miss that? Nearly yanked the rod out of my hand. Well, couldn't get any of those to stick. Sun's going down on us pretty quick. It's already starting to get pretty cold. So we've got about another five, 10 minute drive to where we're gonna try to find camp for the night and get all settled in and get our fish cooked up. But I think tomorrow's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be another clear, cold night and tomorrow looks like it's gonna get a little cloudier and some fish might be moving in the river. But tomorrow is much anticipated as every day of this trip is. Really every day we're going somewhere new and fishing with somebody different who is really knowledgeable around that area that we're going to. So. I'm having a little trouble sleeping the last few nights. It might not be the, the bed that I'm using, but it, I think it's the excitement of what we're going to do next. So let's get these rods strapped down. Let's go find a place to make a nice warm fire and get some food cooked up and crawl into our sleeping bags and get ready for the next adventure. So one of the really special parts, in my opinion, of, of going on these trips and, and doing these adventures and these challenges, whether you're a seasoned veteran or if it's something that you just want to start doing is is that pull and that adventure and that that feeling of exploration that you get you know driving down the road in a new place and and seeing elk run across the road and and you know having that the the nerves and the and the scared feelings in your stomach of not knowing where you're going to sleep that night and how having to find a camp out in the middle of nowhere in an area you've never been before that one you can actually camp there or two is even as you know close to where you're going fishing the next day and putting this all together um, but that sense of adventure and that that helpless feeling I think is a little bit of the fun part of it and the exciting part that always gets me going back because um, you never know what's out there you never know what's around the next corner we are seriously in paradise everybody Cruising the camp, spotting elk in the misty meadows. Look at that one over there. I'm just hanging out, just being elk, doing elk things. Okay, everybody. On tonight's menu is salmon again. Fresh caught from the river this afternoon with our buddy. Oh, yum. Yum, 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 yum. And tonight, I'm gonna do a really easy recipe and definitely one of my favorite. 
and it's gonna just be basically mayonnaise and good seasoning. So this is my secret homemade recipe seasoning again. It's a, a lot of garlic and onion powder and basil and parsley and some other good stuff in there. I'm just gonna do a light coating over the whole fish, just like so. Then I'm gonna take a little Montreal steak seasoning. Give that a little douse. Give it a little flavor. And then the secret ingredient here is what we have here. Some mayonnaise. And some people might think this is weird, but the fat in the mayonnaise actually breaks down and kind of goes into the meat of that salmon. It gives it a really, really nice flavor and it keeps it nice and juicy. It allows you to cook it a little bit longer. So you can get that stuff done so that the flakes are nice and firm. I'm gonna fold this bad boy up. Pinch it there at the top. Get it nice and sealed up there so that none of those juices can fall out. Just like so. A portion of dinner's ready. Well, the fire's ripping, the food's ready to go. We're gonna get a good little bed of coals here and then set our, our grate from our grill over the fire, get our food cooking. Probably take that fish off, get our macaroni going. We got our salad mixed up. We got a couple brews sitting here, our tents ready. Kind of drying it out. It got really humid in there last night and was dripping, dripping water on us all night. So lesson learned, keep some of the windows open if we're gonna have that heater on. And uh, God, what a peaceful, beautiful night. I don't think you could pick a better setting. All right, we'll let that sit on there for probably 15, 20 minutes. Got a nice little bed of coals going, so stack some nice wet wood on top of the fire. Made a little platform. Got my little rack from my grill here, and there she sits. Dinner awaits. All right, everybody, moment of truth. Oh my God, look how good that looks. It's like a golden crisp. Well, I can tell if my fish is done, usually I'll stick it in the thickest part and I just turn my fork, or my, my fork, and I pull it up there. And if all that meat has the same coloration all the way through it, we're pretty much there. This is not recommended, but it works. Good. Let's see how it came out. Absolutely perfect. It even has a little smoky flavor to it. That was so good. Oh my god. We should probably cook their filet now. Night everybody, stay tuned for tomorrow's adventure. Night Sean. Night. Night little. All right everybody, well, we just met up with our man Mike Sellers. Some of you might remember him from an episode, oh. Almost a year ago on one of our Addicted Life episodes, we met these guys down on uh, on a river up here in Washington and had a phenomenal day of steelhead fishing. So we were up north again. We thought we'd give him a ring and what do you know, he had the day and so we met up with him. Now we're headed out to a new river, a new place, icy cold morning, but I'm looking forward to today. Again, we're going to somewhere new that I've never fished before. I'm extremely excited. We got one of the best, Mike runs the whole hatchery program up here on the nation here in Washington and uh, does a fantastic job. You guys have kind of seen a little little blip of it here and there throughout the, the course of our addicted lives and this show even. But we're going to a beautiful place, untouched. Probably won't see anybody else today. And we're gonna go accomplish goal number four and that's river number four and fish number four. Hopefully we can get it done. Fingers are crossed, I'm a little nervous. It's cold, the water's a little bit high. 
Let's see what happens. It was frosty, cold, absolutely frigid, and we were waiting the whole time. We didn't actually go out in the drift boat like we thought we were going to. So we waded down to some of the best spots on the river again, coming off some really high water uh, that we got, saw right before we went on this trip, which almost blew us out, but lucky enough, we got out there. So hit the banks early in the morning. The rest that unfolded was probably one of the coolest days. All right, everybody, with all the excitement, we forgot to introduce our guest yet again. This is Mike Sellers. He has us out here on the river this morning. Conditions look pretty perfect. There's been a lot of talk and lore about steelhead so far in the last few days. So today, instead of even starting fishing for salmon, I got my addicted worm on my mustad jig head. And I'm gonna try to catch a steelhead before anything. At least give it a try. I can't say I'm gonna sleep very good tonight if I don't try to fish for him. So let's see what happens. Funny how excited it, this the thought of a steelhead can get you. Just knowing that they're here and that I stand a really good chance of finding one just gets me so jazzed. It's hard to explain. This fish has such a pull on you. All right, everybody. We're loading up the rods. The sun finally came out and. Unfro unthought our feet from the bank here. But Mike's got another spot we're gonna go to. This river's still a little bit high coming down out of this last storm. So we're gonna head up river to where all the fish went, really. Basically, he said, if we're not gonna catch any fish in these first couple holes, there's no reason to spend the rest of the day here. So we're gonna jump up to the next river, keep searching, and keep trying to get that fourth fish. made it. This is a fishy situation right now. There's nobody here. I can smell them. All right, let's do it. All right, we made it to the next spot. New river, a little bit smaller, kind of got up out of the blown out big river stuff. So this is one of my special spots. I'm going to follow him through the woods here and go try to catch some fish. Oh, that, that, I think I got hit like two or three times through there. I saw the fish move for it each time. Oh, there again. Oh. Okay, that's where they're all at, I think. There he is, got him, got him, got him. Oh yeah. <laughs> he just crushed it through. Oh. <laughs> Second little pass through there. I, the first one I really got through the fish. That's a big fish too. Just kicking my ass. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier with the lighter rod, man. You get a big king like this on there, it really kicks your butt. Jesus. Oh, thrash, thrash slinging slasher, man. Nice, man. Fish number four, river number four. Throws our butts off for two nights for this bad boy right here. What a giant. break my new fishing pole, but this is the kind of fish you do it on. There's his two kick rule again. He's not, he doesn't give me any more credit than two kicks. I think this guy won't get me. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Damn it. Oh man, what a massacre. Broke the new fishing pole. 
But it's okay, I think we can still get him. <laughs> between my legs, between the cameraman's legs and a broken rod. Got him. Oh, goodness gracious. Look out, little. Oh, it's fin clipped even. What do you know? <laughs> wow. Oh. Look at this thing, everybody. That's a hell of a fish number four. Broke a rod for him and everything. That is incredible. Let's give him a breath really quick. Look at how he took that, too. Look at how far that mustad sidewash is in there. Thank you so much, Mike. Helping us accomplish another piece of this goal and making it all happen. This fish you probably touched at one point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Came all the way back up to the hatchery after going and how would you say it? At least 20. Yeah. I mean, it's not the longest fish in the world, but just stout. An incredible, incredible specimen of a salmon. I'm gonna let him go. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Hey, man. Thanks a million, dude. That was incredible. Broke the rod into three pieces. <laughs> he owned us, man. He owned us. First he about took me out right between my legs. And then he's like, oh, here's the camera guy. Shoots through his legs. There was no chance. I opened the bale even. The rod just, he had already wrapped the line around the rod tip. Oh, well, we did it. We did it. We got that fourth fish, man. I was getting nervous. For no, for no good reason, I knew, knew we were in a good place, but I was like, man, what if we didn't catch a fish today? And then, then we get that, the Goliath of all Goliaths. Getting these fish to bite in these adverse conditions, you know, having low clear water on some rivers and having high and, and muddy water on others kind of really brought to light that challenge of, of not expecting or not knowing what you're going at the next day. You know, the second day on a, on a new river is always better than the first day usually. Um, and not giving ourselves a second day each time made it that much harder, but really made it that much more of a, of a successful feeling and accomplishing that goal each day. And, and it seems to have built each day as we went along, catching more and more fish and getting into bigger and bigger fish as we went along the way too. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw that twitcher. I don't really know what else to do right here. A little nightmare pattern. It's gonna be hard to get in front of those fish. There's a steelhead sitting right there. Give me that rod. I can see a steelhead in there. It did not want that. Come on, somebody please eat it. Got him. Yes. Yes, that's a cromer too. Nice, another species. Oh, he is killing me. All right. Got some nice color to him, so bright, doesn't he? Just a fat one. Wow. What a great bobber down too. You see that little definition in his face there? Yeah. Look at that little like tiger stripe on his chin. That is really neat. Oh, I just kept messing with the depth. Kept messing with the depth, kept going up and down. I could see their mouths in there opening and closing and finally I matched it up. I was watching my jig and it disappeared. And then the bobber disappeared. Yes, man, yes. We're pulling it out of our butt. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. I was not expecting a coho to eat that jig. You know? Take one more species now. One more species today on river number four. Yes. Well, man, I think we call it, huh? That was a good day. It made us work for him, but I almost like when the fishing's like this because it makes you go to other places. Yeah. We could have sat in the first run we were at all day and caught fish, but how exciting would that have been? Yep, I like we got to adventure. 
move around, see all kinds of different areas. Yeah, well, you put us on them. That was a heck of a day. What do you think, Lid? Was that a good day? What are we gonna, oh, are you cold from the river swim? <laughs> oh. Well, Mike, you're the man. Thanks for working hard up here and letting us come and visit and play with you. That's the best. All right, everybody. So, trips like this always have diversions and and barriers as you go and just got off the phone with the California connection our buddy Cody down there and uh, was kind of talking trying to plan out our Monday when we were gonna head to California and he said that literally every river in Northern California right now that has a salmon in it is on emergency closure due to drought conditions all the rivers have to be above 600 CFS in order to be able to fish them and they're right now at like 250 CFS so Everything's in a trickle. There's fish down there just laughing at us, flipping us the fin, but we're gonna have to make some little adjustments here. We might not make it to California this year because we wanna do it right. We wanna have seven rivers in seven days and it doesn't look like California's an option at this point. So unless we get some miracle storm, unless the fish gods really look out for us on this trip. So I'm gonna call Marlin. We're gonna figure out our plan, see if we're still going down to Southern Oregon tonight. I'm pretty sure we are. Still got a really good chance of catching fish there, but we're gonna try to piece together Sunday and Monday and there's really no telling what's gonna happen. So stick with us. I'm a little depressed now, but we're gonna make something cool happen nonetheless. Surprise! Marlon's here. Yeah, happy birthday. So it's Marlon's birthday weekend. So we cruised back through while we were heading south, swung into his house and picked him up. I washed my locks so that you guys could stop staring at my dreads all the time. <laughs> and uh, we're headed south. We're gonna go meet Steve Chrysler tomorrow. We're gonna hit the road. We got about a six hour drive tonight. We're gonna live in the lap of luxury in a hotel room because Marlon's here. And uh, you guys know it. Yeah. It's too cold to camp. It's like 20 degrees. Yeah, it wasn't warm. But all right guys, stay tuned. We're hitting the road. Come on in, boys. This is how you camp with Marlon Lefever. Yeah. <laughs> this is Marlon's roughing it. <laughs> Quick little tip for all you addicts and everyone out there watching. If you know it's going to be 28 degrees in the morning, bring your waders and your boots and all that juicy little stuff inside so it's nice and toasty and warm when you put it on in the morning. But if you're camping, you don't have that luxury, so I don't know what to tell you. This is what real life feels like again. Oh, I'm so pumped. What's this for you, Jordan? River number five? River number five, day number five. Day number five, river day number five. Day four was definitely the hardest again. It's progressively gotten harder, but now we traveled close to 600 miles and are in a completely new location where fishing has been good. And let's see. I think let's we can keep happens. doing it. We got one more day. And then after that, we have another day. Tomorrow's day five, and then you that, got day six and day we seven. We got one more day, so. This is super cool. Can, Challenge all you guys. Did you challenge these people yet to no, do this I haven't, exact I haven't same challenge? Dude, seven rivers, seven days, the seven river challenge. The seven river quest. Let's see what happens. We hit the hotel that night, really anxious to go fish a brand new river, one that's famous and, and one of the more beautiful spots that I've ever fished. And I know Marlon kind of thought the same way, but what unfolded that day was really something special and uh, was a treat, especially to have Marlon on his birthday. We're just pulling in. We decided to go up to the upper river, float a little bit more distance today. He's got a couple of rods up front. So me and Marlon are gonna beat it up all the way down the river. There's only a couple boats on. It's Saturday, so that's a relief. Look at this private gate access. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go, river number five. Oh, I'm so glad we didn't sleep in a tent last night. That would have been some next level stuff. Next time, everybody. But I'll have my wall tent ready. 
So this day was a little more, uh, you know, exceptional in my opinion, because each day, of course, as you guys have seen so far, we got to catch multiple species, but this is the first river where we had a damn good shot at getting some steelhead. So this was really gonna wrap up the whole thing. You know, we got our Chinook, we got our coho, we got some trout, but we wanted those summer steelhead or even an early winter. So we're got down to the first run here. Steve wants to plug this first little drift, which I'm totally fine with because I don't see enough plug takedowns in my life. How about you, Marlon? Nope. All right, everybody. Well, we haven't done it yet already, but we want to introduce you to our wonderful guy today, Steve Chrysler. Go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. My name is Steve Chrysler, and I'm a fishing guide here on the Southern Oregon rivers. And uh, today we're out here trying to get some steelhead and some coho with uh, the Dicta crew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so he, uh, me and me and Steve, go back a couple of years. We met on the river, and um, always talked about fishing down here. I'm from Oregon too, and I've always loved Southern Oregon. And I uh, never really got a chance to come fishing because it's so far away. And when we put this trip together, the seven day trip, it was like, crap, well, if we're going that far south, I gotta call Steve and it all came together and it worked out. Perfect. Here we are out here freezing our butts off, back in some wig wigs down the run, dude. So thanks for having us. We appreciate oh, the heck out of it. There, yep, there he is. You got it, you got it, Marlon, you got it. Is he coming at us? I don't think he's got it, Jordan. Yeah. Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he didn't have it yet. I was going to say, it, unless he was coming at us, but it did look like he came at us. He, exactly, the line that went limp. I thought he had it, but I did too. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> nice! Way to go, buddy! Hold on to it. That's what it's all about, everybody. The little dudes are out fishing us. I have it no other way. There's usually the zone, dude, right in front of this rock. You broke that off? What the f is going on, man? That was a fish. Oh, yeah. Well, something's wrong with your line or something, dude. I just retied that, and that thing hammered it. I think it was one of those Chinook, Steve. It might have been, but it's probably a steelhead right here. Dude, that was the full on Kaplooey. We did a camp the whole time, that was great. Oh my god, that was a fish, 100%. I felt him on there. Look Mark. at all the teeth marks on the front of the worm. <laughs> he totally failed. Oh him. yeah, dude. He freaking totally, it's just shredded all off the front. This is a brand new worm. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> I felt him for a sec, like I swear I felt him. Fish on, fish on, got him, got him. Yeah. <laughs> On the spinner. Well, Marlon snag. <laughs> I totally tried to get it off the fish. Did you, anybody see that? <laughs> Everybody saw that. What I hooked, I was rolling it over that rock and I thought it grabbed the rock. And I started like trying to get it off of the rock <laughs> and it started rolling. <laughs> Cute little guy. Come on, give us a little jump. Yes. Seriously, a little chromesicle. Here we go. Oh, tension is high. Yeah. <laughs> we did it, everybody. Fish number five, river number five, and a steelhead this time, so a whole other species. Oh, what a relief. I hooked one and lost it a minute ago. It totally blew up on me. I'm real rolling my spinner through there right before Marlon just snagged his worm. We're going to get it, and I'm like, I gotta get one more spinner cast through there before we let it go. And look what it came out and grabbed my spinner. Oh, so see this hole punch? Punctured. Yep, that's a rerun fish. Two hole punches, or they missed it the first time. No, that's that's a double. So yeah, he's come back twice. twice. Been back twice. Thank you so much, buddy. Thanks for the help. Look at that beautiful fish. Thank you, little guy. Accomplished the goal. One more. Yes! <laughs> High five, buddy. <laughs> Yes! Check and mate. 
oh, on the spinner. I did. See, I told you. On the last black spinner I had too. Goodness. All right, found the rock. I got him on top of this boulder. Like I, I was drifting, I was trying to find the boulder uh -huh. under the river there and I hit it and then right after it went over the top of it, that fish grabbed it. Thank you had your production for hauling that fish back and forth twice for me. Couldn't be more thankful. And that's the beauty of a hatchery system that does stuff like that, you guys. It's little kids like what you saw this morning and big kids like me get to come out here and catch them again and again. That's why we pay our, our license fees. That's why we put all the support that we do into the fisheries is so that we can go out and enjoy stuff like that. And so we were like, all right. There he is. Got him. Got him. Swinging the spinner. Right behind the boat, dude. Just I had gotten right to the end of the swing. I had a big belly in it still. And just, whoa. I saw that rock there. That was so cool. That was hard not to yank back. Oh, that one's a little nicer. Okay, about ready here. I might have another one in, but. Nice. Yeah, a little nicer. Not Golly. The not the same one. God, just another perfect little summer. Look at how look at how perfect that hook is in there, Marlin. Is that that one? Uh-huh, look at that. Just buried. What a beauty. <laughs> All right. They look so cool. Fish number two. Incredible little steelhead. That one's not been to the hatchery. Nope, nope, nope. That's no mouth one. clip. We're gonna get her back. Oh, yes, buddy. <laughs> Here you go, world. Southern this Oregon. Is, Southern Oregon half pounder. Smaller guy. They're actually a small steelhead. Uh, two year old fish. So they've went out to the ocean? They have. Okay. They have. So they don't go far, correct? They don't migrate. No, like they, they don't really migrate like. in like the, the bigger adults do, but real pretty fish, real aggressive, fun to catch. So this is the water treatment plant, the outflow. It's right where about where that ladder is, and that's where those coho are hanging. That's <laughs> nice, they're, they're hanging out in the they're water. Hanging, and we call this the <laughs> hole. That's what this is called. That's and, hilarious. Uh, all fish love it in there. It's so funny. I mean, it's it's just a hot spot. I don't know why they like it. They're actually on just this side of that bubble line. Is where they There he is. There he Got is. Got him. Got him, Marlon. That a boy. Ooh, ooh, he's hot. He's oh, he came off. That was so chrome, too. I know, it was dive. Damn it. That one did? Yep. Nice job, Marlon. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now I'm starting to think something's going on here. Stealing the show. It's pretty dull, honestly. Oh, there he was. Instant. Ooh, there he is. Yep, got him. Yeah! Yes. Oh, he's rallying. Just death rolling. Let's death rolling. Double it up, dude. He bumped us down a little bit and he got into a little different water and bam. When you saw how I was fishing that too, I cast it in there. I started twitching right away and I never reeled once. The entire way through there, I was just letting that jig get all the way in front of those fish and the current's carrying it down while I'm lifting it up and down and it's just kind of the stars aligned, honestly. And you're actually keeping it on, unlike me. That's Look good. at him right in the beak, man. Looks like a hatchery. No, wow. This is number two of the day. Great little coho. It's got a little jaw deformation there. A little wild, dude. We'll get him back. Sweet. We won. We won. We defeated him here at least. Good job, team. Marlon had them all warmed up. I'm happy you hooked one because if not, I would have been unhappy. Yes. <laughs>
super annoyed. All right, everybody, lunch is over. Steve had a couple of cup of noodles hiding under the seat for us, which is a, a blessing. Which was Thank you for that. For yeah. So we're heading down. We got a few good holes left. We got a long journey still again tonight because we're going about another three and a half hours for our next destination to fish tomorrow. And it's Marlon's birthday tomorrow, so you guys need to drop a little comment below of how old do you think Mr. Marlon is, the godfather. I got some gray hair. It's been coming on a lot lately. Is, is it addicted that's stressing me out? Probably. Yeah. So comment below guys so this page gets huge and Marlon's not so stressed out any, all the time. <laughs> and uh, drop a little like and comment below how old you think Mr. Marlin is. 60. All right, let's catch a few more fish. Fish on. Oh my God. Oh, that was such a nice one too. Oh, that was a bummer. God. I thought it was bottom again. I was just making sure it wasn't, and I was kind of like lifting and fluttering. Nice. Oh yeah. Done already? He's coming straight in, straight up. Ah! Oh, dang. <laughs> Rip off. Rip off. <laughs> Fish number five of river number five, day number five, it, it worked. Yeah. I was nervous all morning, but I had faith in you. You, you yeah. kept a pretty positive attitude, which I appreciate all day. Oh yeah. And it Good paid time. off, so. Persistence usually does. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's freezing right cold. Yeah. My hands are starting to fall off. My feet are also falling off. Let's get in the truck. Let's do it, man. Let's we go back to the time. hotel and drive four hours, eh? Yeah. Got two words for you guys. Animal style. Animal style. This is so good. Mm -hmm. All you people that get to eat in and out on a regular basis, I'm so jealous of you. Marlon wanted some in and out burger for his birthday, so we weren't gonna miss that. Thank you, Southern Oregon, for bringing an in and out burger into our lives. Um, and we went about three and a half hours north, almost four hours north, and got to our destination that night at like 10 o'clock at night and shacked up in the hotel, called it a night and had to drive about another hour again in the morning to meet Randy down in this little twisty, windy, muddy road all the way down into Tidewater. Everybody, this is Randy Bales, lured the guide service and lured beads. Yep. He's uh, had us out here today. I am super excited. It sounds like it's been a blast, so. Hand me your rods and we'll get you guys in here and get out of here. So we got a good report from Randy. That's kind of why he called us and like emphasized for us to come because he'd had some really good fishing the entire fall. Um, but I really didn't expect what was coming next. Really, I didn't expect how many jigs I was gonna lose. I think I lost more twitching jigs on that river in that day than I'd lost in any the, any coho season to date. Ready to lose some jigs? Yeah. <laughs> a little woody in here. There he is, got him. Got him. Something. Yeah. Get him. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, that's a giant Sweet. We're only gonna count this as half of a fish today, you guys. So we we're part way to the goal. Goal is one fish, dude. There it is though. Randy, thank you, man. Fish number six, river number six. Whee! Oh, that was good. Got a boy, Marlon. Got a boy. Double it up. Oh, that's a nice fish. What is that, another chug? No. Uh, nice little coho, buddy. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Switch to the old white and peach. That is. 
that's a pretty fish. <laughs> you later, baby. You're in timeout, dude. Yeah, he told you one more. I'm pretty sure it's the monster Chinook. Oh no. I need timeout too. Just reef it as hard as I can right now. Close your eyes. Oh, not yet. Too soon. Just doing a little tree trimming. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, what do I got there, buddy? See you later. All right, everybody. So we've completed our first pass. Floated probably a couple miles up into here. Um, got three fish in the boat. I'd say that was a pretty good first pass. Yeah, bonus, bad. bonus. So what happens, what he's been describing this whole time is as this tide pushes in, it eventually gets to a point where it's high tide and it goes slack. And then that's when all the fish that have moved in start moving around and biting and it's a little easier to get at them. So as that, I think that's gonna happen at noon. It's probably about nine or 10 right now. So another couple hours, we'll just hit it hard and we'll see how many fish actually push in here. Switching jigs are obviously working good already, so. I might start changing my color. I'm gonna have me a fig Newton, more, how about you? Uh -huh. first. You, you need a fig? I might. Mouth's a little hot. Dude, what do you guys think? These freaking co gonna eat the old chatterbait? Dude, I'm I think this is really gonna get him. Like, yeah. Seem to hook one to prove it. Oh, look at him! Look at him right here. There's one right on it, dude. Oh my god, he almost freaking took it. Yeah, he was right freaking on it. What do you think, addicts? You think this is gonna get one? I already had a follow on it. Nope, it's gonna go bye-bye. Yeah, it's done. Oh, you're right! Randy was right. Oh, that's how you get him. You got yeah, that's him! The that's fighting. That's the right oh. He freaking hit it like a ton of bricks. It's definitely... Uh, <laughs> Wrapped up coho. Nice coho. Pretty fish too. It looks a little fresh. Still wrapped up. Come on, buddy. Choked it. Yeah, I thought that was coming, buddy. Nice fish, bud. Pretty, huh? One we got so far. Well. I'm not all about quantity. I'm more with the quality. Yeah, you know, you're a weight guy. Yeah, one of these guys can get it. I'll probably drop it. I'm gotcha. 48 gotcha. next week. My hands are going numb. There you go. They like when you cradle them like that. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, wow, somebody to snug with. There you go. Beauty. Nice job, Jason. Thanks, Randy. Wee! Nice job, buddy. Yep. Nice. Nice, dude. Might be. I landed about six now. Production, what we call production out here on the old slough. Beautiful hen. A lot of hens, Randy. On the fault. Got him on the fault. Oh yeah, that's a Chinook too. Gotta be. Gotta be a Chinook. I actually think it is though. It's fighting. It's not. It's not rolling. 
All right, baby. Second species, hopefully. It sure ain't fighting like a freaking coho is. Oh no, big Chinook. Big Chinook. Real nice one. Real nice one, dude. Yes. It looks really crawl. <laughs> now he woke up. Wow. Just clobbered it, she did. Oh, thank you, Randy. Stuck it out, too. Just a perfect grab by her. She intercepted that thing before it hit the bottom. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Species number two, river number six. I was really not expecting the, the level of fishing that we got to experience that day, you know, from the amount of wild coho and big coho that we caught to some of the big chrome chinook that we were able to get. And just the casual numbers that we caught that day was so impressive to me. And to get to spend time with the mead man himself, Jason Stricker was, uh, was definitely a surprise and a pleasure. We nailed him good and it was a great birthday. It was great to spend Marlon's birthday with him and let him catch the most fish that day. Okay, little update for you guys. The we sun's out, him. we're warm. Marlon's been whacking him on his jig, making me all flustered here. <laughs> but it's all right, it's humbling. Finally, finally everybody else is having fun. Tomorrow's adventure is still a big question mark. We don't know where we're gonna go, which is kind of fun. Obviously, we were supposed to go down to California, but that all got x nayed by the fact that every river in California is closed. So we traveled north and was lucky enough to have good friends like Randy to, to get us out here on some fish. But tomorrow is just gonna be me and Sean on foot somewhere in Oregon. Holy moly, that's a keeper. Not a bad nice one. If you guys have liked this challenge so much, so far in this episode or in this series, I want you to go out and challenge yourself to this. We'll talk more about that towards the end, but if you guys like this seven day challenge, let's make it a thing. Comment below with whether you've ever done anything like this, whether it was two, three, or five, seven days. And uh, again, drop a little like there so this video gets out there and everybody can see it. Here he comes and there he goes. That thing is a monster. Is it? Look at this. Sea lion got him pretty good. Is that a yeah. broke off or something, bro? Yeah. Later, bud. Dude, Randy's on. <laughs> oh, that one's just throwing the photo shot. <laughs> Yeah, that's a freaking diamond. Right, Look at where it's on. God. Oh, that's about the steepest spot I've ever seen. <laughs> really, I didn't expect how many jigs I was going to lose. I think I lost more twitching jigs on that river in that day than I'd lost in any the, any coho season to date, um, all in one day. So it was it was definitely jig sacrifice day in that river. Okay, we're Lewis and Clark in it up river for our last pass. It's continuously getting fishier the further we go, so I don't know how this is gonna be our last pass, but we're committed. We've got another long drive home to celebrate Marlon's birthday. We really kind of rallied off on him. We changed spots a little bit, moved about a mile from where we were and teed off pretty good on some. Fish in this section of the river was a, were a lot bigger in my opinion. Yeah. Every one we caught was way bigger, so awesome move by Randy. Let's see what happens on this last pass. See if I can get back on the board. Now I'm that you took going through jig. a little slow streak, yeah. Now that I got the right jig on. Mine. Oh, get in the tree. Fish on by Randy in the back of the boat. See how he told me to come up here and catch. Oh my god, he did. He totally did. <laughs> Yes, the 
looks like it's rolling good on you. Roll it up, baby. Roll it up. My fire truck. It's a good one. Oh, come on, double up. Double up. Are you on the chatter? Me? Yes. Come on. No. Beauty. I don't care who you are. Those still are cool. Yep. Gorgeous fish. That's a chrome. Yeah. Wax, dude. Wax. See you later, buddy. Well, everybody, our day's kind of winding to an end here. Our last pass turned into about another two hours, which is pretty common for most fishermen, I guess. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. But thanks to Randy today, huge thanks to Randy. He's put us on one of the hottest days so far this trip. I was very, very happy to spend the day with Marlon on his birthday. We got a big surprise with Stricker here today. All in all, it has been a total slam dunk. It has been a great day. So I'm excited for tomorrow. Just about as excited for some food as I am for tomorrow. We're not stopping. We're not stopping? Okay. No food. Unless we pass a Burgerville, then Marlon won't be able to help himself. Should we go back down the in and out? Yes. There's a bunch of them right here, too. As you can see them, the water's super clear right here. You can see them really good. We're just on the side of a road. We literally are on right next to the main road, and this is like just some random little creek, and there's a bunch of chums spawning right in the side of the side of the creek. You can see them up there in the rapids and stuff. Look at the side of them right here. So after that day on the water, the idea was to take about another three and a half hour trek north back towards our home area and try to identify another coastal river that none of us have ever coho fished. Marlon had to work the next day, so it was just me and Little uh, that were embarking on this last day's journey. And this, honestly, I was so nervous that night, I almost didn't sleep. Um, you know, that, that anxiety of finishing this off, like we made it through the entire trip. I mean, all this time, all this effort, all this gas money and, and food money and energy spent to accomplish this goal, we were down to that last day. All right, everybody. So as plans continue to change, we hit a major traffic jam here, heading to our seventh river this morning. And it's making for a game time decision. Do we wait three hours to go two and a half hours down to the coast to fish our last river, or do we jump ship on that plan and fish something else? We've had to be super, super versatile throughout this whole trip as far as going places where there's one water and two fish three where we could get to. Um, but I think today's gonna call for a little little action here. I think we're gonna turn around and we're gonna head north on the freeway and we're gonna go hit a different river than we anticipated because I don't think we're making it to that other river anytime soon with that kind of traffic. So stay tuned. Nobody knows what's gonna happen today. Today's gonna be full of suspense and tension. We gotta get this done. We gotta catch our seventh fish on our seventh river on the seventh day and complete this challenge. And again, I challenge all of you guys out there and gals to go out and try to do this on your own. Whether it's lakes, whether it's rivers, whether it's trout, bass, salmon, whatever it is. Let's see if we can get this going. Let's start this challenge. I hope I can finish it today. We got one more fish to catch. Hopefully there'll be more than one fish throughout the day. But we got one more to catch, and I hope it happens here. We hightailed it, pulled a quick maneuver, hightailed it back north to a different river that we'd never fished before midday. Got up there about 7.30, and as you guys will see next, absolutely had the best case scenario happen and accomplished the goal. There's signs of life. One just rolled. It's kind of what we were waiting for. This little section that we're gonna fish today is kind of a, a biatch to fish as far as put in and take out. So I wanna make sure there's some fish around before we do this. Tide's not pushing in yet. But we shall see here in a minute. I think we're just gonna go for it. Go full send mode. Even if we have the Lewis and Clark at back up river. I think it's a big tide today, so it should push us back up here. But we shall see.
on. Fish on. Not bad, dude. He's in. So let's get off the phone here. Hey, enough. I know you're excited about completing this challenge too, Little. So I'm calling Marlon on the cell phone, sitting here in the first hole, and uh, cast the nightmare out there, and I didn't realize how deep the hole was, let it sink to the bottom. Instant fish. What a way to complete this series, you guys. Look at this fish. Little, please let it go. Good boy. Look at that hen. Oh my God. Well, I am so proud and so happy and delighted that we just did it, guys. We did it all together. You guys have been along for the ride for seven days now. And uh, it has been the biggest learning curve as well as the biggest life lesson in a way. You know, we got to meet so many cool people along the way and see so much water. It's, it's hard to fathom. Last night I was laying in bed thinking about it and just the things that we've seen on this trip and the things this challenge has forced us to go do is, is monumental, you know, it's something that a lot of people wouldn't have enough ambition to do, even me at times, but these little critters right here made us do it. Did it for the fish. And there she goes. Thank you, sweetie. Yee! All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Let's do it again. On. On him. <laughs> hey, hey, please stop it. <laughs> Look at that. Another chunky hand. <laughs> oh my god. Everybody watching this right now is probably like, oh, they probably just put those there. That was too easy. Right in the beak again. Nightmares of color today, guys. Yeah, okay. Get the picture, huh? <laughs> See, sometimes guys, all it takes is a coin flip. That's what I did this morning. After our first plan failed, I nearly panicked and I was kind of pouting about it. I was like, God, man, how are we gonna make today happen? Things are not going our way. Had a huge wreck on the freeway, traffic jam. Couldn't get to where we wanted to go. So we came to where we could go. And look what happened, man. Fate took care of us. Man, it's deep in there. Fish on. <laughs> Little. <laughs> he just did a kamikaze out here to get this fish. Way to go, tiny boy. Okay. Good boy. Good fish. Yes. Oh, you're so wrapped. Grab them with your bare hands, everybody. Another beauty. A little wild that time. Let's get him back. Okay, we're going to see how many times we can do this. This is freaking awesome. So I'm fishing blind now. Tide's all the way in. I have absolutely no clue where the fish are going to be. He's kind of looking honestly for anywhere I can't see bottom or anywhere one rolls. I'm gonna kind of go running after it. But let's just stick, stick with our plan because I think we can pretty effectively row to the very end of this and then just let the wind blow us all the way back. Come on, you guys, give yourselves up. Just give me a little splashy splash here. Show me where you're at. Throw me a bone here. And I'll throw you a jig. Fish on. Oh, he is going eight. Let's see if I can get him to tow me over here towards the bank a little bit. Sweet. Just a dime again. Wonderful. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Man, this is cool. 
Definitely came into this this morning fairly optimistic, but boy howdy, I'm glad we stuck with our plan. Well, we worked our way about a half mile or so down, down the slough into the tide. This wind is really kind of kicking our butts off of here today. But what our plan is, is because this is the seventh day and because we're both haggard and we're tired and we are completely beat from this trip, I think we might pull out of here somewhat early. We're gonna fish the rest of this tide. See how it goes. See if we can put a few more fish on the boat. But my God, the coin flip did not did not deceive us today. Man, I gotta do that more often. This hog tied himself again. This coho love doing that with these jigs. Oh, that one just engulfed it. Another nice little colored up buck. It's excited to see you. He is? Mm -hmm. Oh, all over my hands. Ew. I got away with fish, what can I say? Try it again. Fish on. Feisty little female here. One more for the road. Just a perfect fish. Thank you, sweetie. What a banger last day. Oh my God, who saw this coming? An absolute slam dunk for day seven. Day seven, river seven, fish number 10. <laughs> Probably the most important lesson and, and the biggest takeaway from this trip wasn't the accomplishment of an angler of catching seven fish in seven days over that big of a span of area, but it was getting the share and having that awakening again as an angler to see how passionate people are about fishing and how, how willing, even though it's a secret spot or it's a sacred river or it's, a, it's a someplace that you don't even normally take people that you're gonna take fishing, but the willingness and the, the giving nature of people in this sport and in this world still um, to go and have fun and enjoy the outdoors together and, and accomplish goals and accomplish challenges um, was probably the shining light in all of it was, was you know, seeing the love and that deep rooted connection that people have with their rivers and their, their home places that they grew up and they spent all their time and getting to experience what it's like to live a day in those people's lives was, was probably the most impactful thing in the entire trip. Now I challenge all of you anglers out there, whether it's to do a one day challenge, a two day challenge, it doesn't have to be seven, it could be 20, it could be anything, but get out there. I challenge all of you addicts and all of you anglers across the world to go out there, set goals for yourself, and I challenge you all to go out and enjoy the outdoors and experience the love and the compassion and the freedom that you feel when you go and spend time in the outdoors and on these rivers, whether it be fishing for salmon, steelhead, trout, or any species that you have near you in the world, get out there, go find the love and go have fun out there on the water.